Welcome back to the Nutra Medical Report, and we are joined by Mike Velarde. Mike, welcome back to the program. Hey, Dr. Bill, thanks for having me. Mike, uh, your website is Mike Velardia, and that's, let's spell it out for us so that we get it correctly. Yeah, it's Mike Velarde, E-A, that's M-I-K-E-V-I-L-A-R-D-I-E-A dot com. Now, you're a former IRS agent, you're also a believer, and uh, the last program you were on a couple weeks ago, you made some very important statements, and I've actually repeated that uh, uh, on this show and also when I've been a guest on other shows, like the Rents Network last night, Mm -hmm. on Tuesday nights, where I'm usually just a guest for an hour. Um, Tell us the uh, documents, you talked about the documents that are in the Obamacare Affordable Care Act, and we have a battle going on, people don't understand, America can't stand another four years of Obama. If we get no. four more years of Obama, it will be the USSA, the United Soviet States of America. And then we'll have a totalitarian government with 200,000 drones, no privacy. You'll have to show your papers, please. We'll probably have a devalued currency with biometrics, forced vaccines, uh, forced eugenics on demand, uh, I call hangnail medicine at the speed of the Department of Motor Vehicles. Uh, since you'll have DMV level medicine by mid levels, doctors will have quit en masse. We'll have a disaster of global proportions. No new medical care developments or drug developments will occur. And the IRS effects in terms of the taxes will be devastating to the economy and not at all allow us to compete with other countries. Uh, but there's even more noxious. It includes the implantable chip. And I want you to, to go through some of these documents so people will say, this isn't just a theory. Because even when I spoke last night and Reds would say, really, you mean, you're, you're kidding. It's not really there that they actually have the implantable chip. And you mentioned page 1004 right. of the Affordable Care Act. It's actually in print. Tell us what it says there. Yes. And I think you actually sent some of this to me, uh, portions of the documents, so I could actually look it up and actually post it on the site so people that are skeptical, because most people haven't read this, I think, almost 3,000-page document, which is the so-called Affordable Care Act. And that's what uh, Nancy Pelosi said. You've got to pass it so then we can read it and find out what's in it. Believe it or not, that's what this crazy woman said. <laughs> well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me give, tell, tell everybody you're in your audience what um, the microchip is. It's called an RFID, which stands for Radio Frequency Identification Device. Um, it is a transponder that's encased in silicon glass and implanted in, in, in the body of a human being. That's what it is. Um, they came into being, um, they were tested back in the 1990s, and uh, ultimately numerous companies have tried to make them take off. They use them. They're very popular with dogs and animals so that you can locate your pets in the event that they get lost. Now, when it comes to Obamacare, and this is all, you know, over um, in the Internet, if you go to Google and Google it, that's, that's where I pulled it up from. Um, here's what it says, as you, as you were talking about page 1004 in the act itself. It's uh, the Obamacare health care bill under Class 2, Paragraph 1, Section B, specifically includes a Class 2 device that is implantable. And on 1004, it describes what the term data means in paragraph 1, section B. That's going to be, and that's the data they're going to use on the chip. Right. This is this. In this paragraph, the term data refers to information respecting a device described in paragraph 1, including claims data, patient survey data, standardized analytical files that allow for the pooling and analysis of data from disparate data environments, electronic health records, and any other data deemed appropriate by the secretary. So what they're saying is basically they want all your medical information, you know, in respect to your insurance company, any claims you've had, any of your health history, all that stuff, and anything else that, you know, the secretary deems appropriate. Right. Now, will that be on the chip, or will it just be an opening code on the chip to a central database? Yeah, right, exactly. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's really, really frightening. And the taxes that are associated with this, I mean, they call it the Affordable Health Care Act. And, of course, that's really a joke because everything that they do in this act makes it less affordable. And let me give you a couple of examples uh, real quick. Uh, one of the things that they're doing is they're raising the deduction, the medical deduction that you could take on your uh, friend as an itemized deduction on your Schedule A from 7.5% of AGI to 10% of AGI. So what that means is if you have, you made $100,000, let's say, and you had 
um, fifteen thousand dollars worth of medical expenses, right now you could take half or seventy five hundred as a deduction. Next year you'll only be able to take five thousand or a third. So you go from half your medical expenses to a third, if that's the number. Wow. Um, uh, and the next thing they do, it, again, if you want to make it more affordable, you wouldn't do that. You'd go in the other direction. And you'd take it down from 7.5% to 2.5%, you know, so the people would be helped. Um, right now, you have unlimited contributions to uh, an FSA which is a flexible spending account. So if you know you're going to have a major operation and you make $100,000 a year, you could say, you know what, I want to cover the cost of this major op operation. I'm going to take 30000 out of my salary to cover it. You only get taxed on the other seventy, And, you know, your, 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 your operation is, is paid for with money that wasn't taxed, which is very beneficial to you. Well, under Obamacare, they limit that amount to 2500 a year. So if you're going to have a major operation, you are screwed. I mean, now it comes out of after-tax money, which, which, is, which is, makes it much more expensive. Wow. So if they really wanted to make health care affordable, they would have went in the, in the opposite direction than the direction they decided to go in. Yeah, and this is from a former IRS agent yourself. And you, of course, yeah. work in your business, actually help people to appropriately yeah. pay what taxes are due, but not to pay things that are not appropriate. What we see happening here is there is a, is a power grab and a tax grab that's not going to help the economy. It's like the austerity fascism in Europe. It's going to crash the economy. It's going to destroy health care, and it's going to actually increase the cost of business so we won't be able to compete on a workers' compensation level with any other country in the world either. It will make the cost the number one cost on the planet for workers' comp and for health care. Yes. Yeah, because if you make any kind of money, I mean, uh, the way, I mean, this coupled with the expiration of the uh, Bush tax cuts um, is going to make next year the worst year for taxpayers in a long, long time. Not to mention the fact that under, under this health care bill, they're going to be hiring more IRS employees because they have to get the mandate tax, but they're also going to be used to collect other taxes so you're going to you're going to increase the power and the strength of the irs um and by do also by doing that you're also going to raise taxes um uh, proportionally i mean just to give you an example and starting next year in 2013 all a part of your net investment income including long-term capital gains dividends collected by you know higher income folks when and then that that's defined as over 200,000 for an individual you're going to get stock with an additional 3.8 percent medicare contribution tax and the, what that does is it actually takes the the rate uh, i mean Amazing. Back in a moment with Mike Velarde. Welcome back. I've actually got the documents here now, and I uh, just want to pull up a couple of these clips. One of them is a uh, video clip as well. Coverage under Obamacare will require an implantable chip by March 23, 2013. And here's the things in the paragraph. It says in paragraph 1, section B, and we're right at page 1004, in uh, line 14, and I'm just going to actually quote the actual line so people can see it's not, we're not making this up, and we're not, even Jeff Rents, when I talked to him last night, he was in a state of shock, you know, and he deals with this kind of craziness all the time. The problem is people call us conspiracy theorists. How about conspiracy researchers? That's a Tex Mars, Dr. Tex Mars term. We're conspiracy researchers. By the way, uh, by the name of Obama, I interviewed uh, two year, years and a half. The senior Soviet nuclear agents told him, men and women, that our future president would be Barack Hussein Obama. And this was back in the early 90s, long before he was even a senator. And so, and they said he was a member not only of the Soviet GRU, but he was also uh, a, a Soviet agent. Uh, wow. Well, we, we'll have the USSA. And people say, oh, that's an impossible, Dr. Deagle. I said, no, it's not impossible. 
Uh, we know that the American banks, the Bank of New York and other banks, were involved with directly the financial takedown of Russia. What do you think the America, Russia would do to try to get back at America? Well, uh, implant someone like uh, Obama along with their banker globalist uh, maniacs. So let's read some of them. Page line 14. Uh, in B, in this paragraph, the term data refers to, in 15, formation respecting the device prescribed in paragraph 1, including claims data, patient survey data, standardized analytical files that allow for the pooling and analysis of data from disparate data environments, electronic health records, and any other deemed appropriate by the Secretary. That's what you quoted. Yes. Approved by the FDA, a Class II implantable device is an implantable radio frequency transponder system for patient identification and health information. That's every newborn and every U.S. citizen will have an implantable device with their bank accounts, their medical information, and have tracking capabilities. Now, most people think that's just an 18 centimeter tracking device. No, no, these tracking devices will be akin to the kind. meter anywhere on Earth. And, of course, they're going to have radio frequency detectors that will be able to detect and track you. So money itself will be irrelevant, which is why they're planning on moving toward a G20 world currency that will be biometric. And they'll print as much money as they want. You will now be a lab rat with a trackable ID chip in you. And we're talking about less than a year away now. This is March 2013. So if this bill isn't nullified by the states and by the, quote, next president, whoever that is, we're in facing the literal mark of the beast. This is not a conjecture. This is not a theory. This is a bold-faced, in-your-face, oh-my-God fact. Right. It, it, it takes your breath away when you think of it. And it's like, no way. I mean, we're going to do everything we can, legally and otherwise, before this ever comes on. And you mentioned it with Harley Schlanger, that this is actually part of their plan. But it's not just here, by the way. People should realize the RFID chip is being planned in India where they're doing biometrics on every single Indian citizen. I think they have a population that will soon exceed the Chinese in the next uh, five, five or ten years. Something like 1.3 billion people, almost. Uh, they're, in countries all over the world, they're actually moving toward biometric banking. Biometric banking where there's no physical money anymore. In fact, in many countries like Australia and Britain, they will not issue a written check anymore. They'll only do electronic funds transfer. And you know that this opens the door to total hegemony by the banker elite that will basically make you a, if you want to call it an animal in their system, in their farm system of the new economy of the 21st century. Their plan is to, is to make you totally dependent on the cool government from cradle to grave, get inadequate health care, <clears throat> have your assets degraded to the point where you have no assets or wealth whatsoever, and totally dependent on the government to feed you, to clothe you, to house you in whatever highly compact cities that will fit with the Agenda 21 policy and the Rio Conference of 1992. Again, they had a Rio 20, 2020, which is 20 years after the 2012, after the 1992 conference this year. And... Uh, there's no change in their policy. The global maniacs are still moving forward, and they're failing forward with collapses like Europe based on the same idea. The sort of device would be implanted in the majority of people who opt to become covered by the public health option. Well, there won't be any private option, by the way. Obamacare will wipe out private health insurance very, very quickly, won't it? Yes, it will. Yeah. With the reform of private insurance companies who charge uh, outrageous rates, many people will switch their coverage to a more affordable insurance plan. This means the number of people who choose the public option will increase. This also means the number of people who do chip will be plentiful as well. The adults who choose to have a chip implanted are the lucky ones, yes, lucky ones in the case, children who are born in the United States who at the time of birth is not otherwise covered under acceptable coverage will be qualified and placed into the CHIP or Children's Health Insurance Program, which is a convenient name. Isn't that funny? They call it CHIP, C-H-I-P, mm -hmm. Children's Health Insurance. You know, clever little demonic uh, twist on words there. With a name like the CHIP, it would seem consistent to have the CHIP implanted into a child conceived by parents who have uh, already got coverage under the public option will more than likely be implanted with a CHIP by the consent of the parents. Eventually, everyone will be implanted with a CHIP. And with the price and coverage of public option being so competitive with private companies, the private company may not survive. Well, we know it won't. We know that in the first couple of years after 2014, 
the private health insurance will jump 30 to 40 percent, soon double, and eventually only the super rich will be able to have private health insurance and everybody else will be chipped. Right. What they do is they have that Cadillac tax of 40%. So if you have a real good plan, they're going to make you pay an exorbitant cost for it to get you to switch to the public option. That's part, that's part of the why that they put that Cadillac tax in place. Yeah. And by the way, the FDA has already improved these uh, implantable chips, even though the chips have been known to actually cause health problems. Uh, this kind of evil is just unbelievable. And we've got Sibelius, who's not even a health professional, not even a toxicologist or a member of our academy, wants a toxic chip that will cause not only radio frequency pollution, but also toxic pollution from the components inside the chip itself. And, of course, a toxic invasion of your privacy uh, and autonomy, where you have no more privacy and autonomy. Once you have a chip in you, you're no different than someone's dog that got lost. Right. And, and they found that these chips uh, cause cancer, which, which caused they? a company, couple of companies like Verichip to go out of business a couple of years ago because when the cancer results came out, nobody wanted them. Well, you know, it's interesting. It says in the Bible that they will have a grievous sore, those who take the chip with a mark. Yes. And doesn't that fit exactly? By the way, it's because of the toxics in the lithium batteries that they have in these little chips. They're all designed to contain these lithium batteries that they release even through the chips that they think are are, are not going to get broken or chipped or or snapped. They're all eventually going to get bumped or whatever, and they'll all leak. And when they leak, they cause cancer at the local site, uh, sclerosis and inflammatory changes, and they can be extremely toxic, and they're also quite mobile. Believe it or not, it's here. So Mike Velarde, IRS agent. Again, Mike Velarde, V-I-L-A-R-D-I-E-A. I'll have this all posted up here on Nutra Medical here very shortly so people can see. Again, keep your skepticals on, but this is the facts. I can't believe it, but it's true. Yep. Number eight. Yeah, amazing. Welcome back, and uh, this is quite amazing stuff. But uh, let's let's get into it uh, a little bit further. Uh, let's talk about what do you see happening with Obama and what's going on with uh, uh, you know with this whole election. I call it the selection because it seems to me like Romney is actually screwing things up. Even Sarah Palin's making comments that he needs to quote light the hair on fire. That's one of her comments in the news media today. Uh, what do you think is happening? Because we cannot, we cannot survive as a nation or as a people with one more term of Obama. And by the way, even if we have another a term of Romney, he'll be almost as noxious because he's so sneaky. He flips on everything, and in many ways he may be even in some ways worse because the, the quote, the right, the conservative right and Christians, anybody pro-life, even agnostics or atheists, are going to be totally taken aback by who this guy really is because you can't nail him down to see what is Romney. He'll be the first Ashperger's president. Well, I could I could tell you this: when I've been hearing Obama's having financial problems, that they're having money, they're having uh, money raising money for their uh, uh, for, for, for their um, the you know, their party, their party, uh, you know, the, the the party meeting in in um, August in South Carolina. Right. Uh, there's issues with that. They're ten million behind. The unions don't want to support it because it's an it's a not it's an it's a right to work state. So he's having problems raising money right now. He never had that issue last time four years ago. So I I, I mean this guy we can't have again. We just can't because well, we know the globalists have, have picked him. He's no doubt that he's been picked. But whether or not the people can stomach having him in there is a whole different thing altogether. He's a Kenyan citizen. He was born in Kenya. He doesn't have an allegiance here to the United States. I mean, uh, I mean, they know he wasn't born in Hawaii. I mean, uh, the, the sheriff in Arizona proved that. It just well, why hasn't the sheriff brought that up, by the way? I haven't heard about uh, Sheriff Arpaio lately. What's going on? Why, why hasn't Sheriff Arpaio brought all this information up? Because it's a month before the, you know, the big conventions. What the heck's going on? Why, why well, hasn't he not brought this up? Well, it's not that he hasn't brought it up, but it's going to court, but they keep no, no. going out of court until after the election. That's what they're doing. They're postponing they it. So none of that stuff can become public until after the election. Because if mean he like loses, he... it doesn't matter. And then if he wins, um, 
I don't know what they're going to do, but but they're at least they're at least postponing this thing until after November, until the election takes place. But um, it, it, I mean, they have documents showing that you know they even have film of somebody that back in the '90s uh, talking to the residents of this Kenyan village where he was actually born, and how proud he was that he was a senator. Um, and and you know he's not a natural born citizen. He doesn't qualify to be president. Everything that this guy has done should be struck down. Yeah, everything, everything. It's quite everything. amazing, isn't it? Everything he did. Uh, what, what I find amazing is that the Democratic Party has totally backed this guy. It's like, what are they doing? Are they crazy? Uh, you know, are they all a bunch of criminals there? And also he's backed by ACORN, which is a criminal organization uh, that have done tactics that should have gotten a lot of people into prison. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm surprised that you know that even the, the liberal Jews are backing him because you know he's a Muslim and he certainly hasn't helped Israel and he's well he's shown all the signs that he's a Sunni Muslim. He even uh, did the right. particular kind of bow before the the, yeah. the Saudi Arabian king that he, only a high level Muslim would know how to do that. Exactly. Matter of fact, uh, when they Kamal Salim went through the details of that bow and he's a former PLO terrorist. And, and he explained how, he, how basically what, what Obama did was 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 submit the United States to Saudi Arabia, and certainly we're paying enough in gas to, to you know to, our, our wealth is being transferred to them because of the high cost of fuel. Yeah, pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I, I'm 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 boggled by this whole situation. It's just beyond uh, it, it's beyond belief. Actually, is what it is. Yeah, it, it, it is, and I, I'm you know I. Um, I don't know. I mean, Romney, you know, let's see who he picks for a running mate. Um, cer certainly, I don't think he, could be, he can't be worse than this guy. Uh, this guy has a definite agenda. He, the only legislation he got through is this Obamacare thing, which is an absolute nightmare. It's going to, it's guaranteed to bankrupt the economy in 2013. Guaranteed. Well, because you have the combination of what they call, they call it the cliff, is I guess one of the terms they're using, and you're a financial mm -hmm. expert. The cliff means all the so called Bush tax cuts, and the idiot Obama right. wants to extend them only one year for just the people under 250000 Every small right. business in America makes more than 250000 Seventy-five percent of the jobs in America are made by small business. Small business cannot become medium or larger business unless it actually retains some income so it can hire more people, buy more equipment, get more space to build things. And that means small business will be killed, the middle class will be destroyed, and the people say, oh, this is going to help. No, it's not going to help. In fact, it will raise premiums up for people that want private insurance, and uh, you'll be forced into public option. It will be just horrendous. It will be like be turning health care into the Department of Motor Vehicles. Take a number and have a seat even if you're having a cardiac arrest. Too bad. If you die here, we'll just call the morgue team to come in and grab your dead carcass. People say, oh, that's exaggerating. No, it's not. It's not. I've seen what happened in healthcare in socialist countries like Canada where they play, you know, monitor roulette or they put you through the Liverpool protocol. They, they literally browbeat the families to let their parents die rather than just normal interventional care that could save them and have them salvaged. No, socialized health care in Canada, in Britain, in Australia, in New Zealand, in these socialist countries in Europe kills people. And the numbers that came out a few weeks ago was that 29% of the people that die in Britain die of the Liverpool protocol. No food, no water, no antibiotics, no medical care, not even basics that you get if you're even in a bed at your home where you get food and water. It's just obscene. And anybody who tries to whitewash it, most doctors that actually have a conscience will not be able to practice in the system even if they wanted to. Even if they have to end up pushing a cart and, and going bankrupt, they will not be able to stomach practicing in a Nazi-controlled health care system that will be killing people left and right. Yeah, it's frightening. You got to wonder how, you know, who who are the people that really support Obama? Who's and Obama any? just uh, smirks and looks like, oh, I'm I'm just uh, Obama. Worship me, and uh, everything will be fine. I'm thinking right. this guy is so narcissistically crazy that he just thinks if he just smiles the right way and acts Mr. Schmooze, that everybody will accept the fact that he's a psychopathic killer. That's what he is. He only comes out of his blue room from his his gay lover behind the Oval Office when it's time to actually pull up those death cards and actually decide who's going to be killed by the next Predator drone. It's sickening. <laughs> sickening. Uh, this, is, this is not a joke. This is really sickening. And America better get back on track, because I can tell you, as a Christian and as a, a believer and as a prophet, I can tell you, America is under horrible judgment, and America will be fried. We are eventually going to make enough enemies. America will have incoming nukes on in every square inch of this country, and people will die by the hundreds of millions. 
if they don't repent, if they don't repent of a president who's now got not only abortion on demand, also opened up the the Pandora's gate, literally, for chimeric, animal-human chimeras, monstrosities, and eugenics on demand, it's over. If America, of, and by the way, if anybody out there that calls himself a Christian votes for Obama, I'll be there at the judgment seat right beside Jesus Christ, and I'll be saying, you know what? I witnessed on the radio to those people, and you, Jesus, knows who who heard that message. And you heard Mike Velarde and other witnesses come forward. And at that point, they will receive the full force of judgment. Because I'm going to tell you, if somebody calls himself a Christian and votes for Obama because he, quote, can't vote for Romney or for anybody else, believe me, Romney would be bad. Obama is like literally voting for Satan himself. I agree with you, and, and yet there are Christians who who do support him. Um, well, you know what? I, mean, I tell you, those Christians need to be spat upon. Those Christians need to get a good, get a good spiritual whooping. They need to get a real kick in the butt because the kind of disgusting behavior that I've seen from Christians, and I've talked to them, and they've said, oh, Dr. Deagle, I'm so sorry I voted for Obama. I said, what would possess you knowing, even before the first election, that he not only supported abortion but infanticide? Even Hillary Clinton didn't support the infanticide bills. As awful and as horrendous as she is, the most evil person I've personally ever met on the planet, and yet Obama's even worse. That's yeah. how bad it is. Yeah, you're right. She, she's a better choice than he is. Unbelievable. Even yeah. Hillary Clinton is better than Obama. It shows you how much of a piece of of demonic garbage this man is. Well, you know, you know what's interesting, Doctor Bill. I, I remember years ago, back in nineteen. Back in a moment. Like stay, stay there. Welcome back, and we've been talking about the lethal presidency of the illegal alien in the White House who has used, illegally used a Social Security number that's not his from Connecticut that has illegal birth certificates that are not a conspiracy theory. It's a fact that has passed laws, used executive orders, and said he's not even going to take orders from the Congress who can uh, decide on war like the Syrian war that they're trying to push now and the Libyan and Tunisian wars, which he promulgated based on NATO and the United Nations, and didn't even consult the Congress or the Senate. It's just disgusting. This is not a president. This is a dictator in nascent development. And the NDAA, which we talked about yesterday with Gary Creep, has been basically put on hold with an injunction that the federal government tried to stop the injunction against illegal detention without habeas corpus or charges indefinitely by this president just from basically saying we don't like you you're going in the big house and that's it see ya or execution he can execute anybody anywhere anytime just because he's having a bad day and he decides you're the mark well I think, Dr. Bill, this guy's going to be stopped. I don't, I don't see him winning this, this time out in November. Well, if I say these things two years from now when Obama gets in and these disgusting Americans that vote for this idiot yeah, vote for him, they're going to get more than they care bargain for. They're going to have a dictator worse than Takamata, worse than Adolf Hitler, worse than Genghis Khan or Vladimir Ilyich Lenin or, or any of the other horrifying dictators of the past. This guy will outdo Mao Zedong. He will be the most awful, god-awful, narcissistic maniac that the human race has ever faced. And I see him as the potential, and I say right up at the top of the list, potential. And, you know, a lot of people get a mistake, this idea of false prophet, beast dictator. There's three different individuals involved in the unity, uh, the triunity of the end times. The religious leader who will do the quote, marriage ceremony between the East and West. And the West will be the bisexual, feministic uh, uh, president of the United States who will be able to impose the mark of the beast on the whole planet and bring fire rain down, rain down from heaven. And then we'll have the, quote, the beast dictator from Russia. Russia is not our friend. Russia is not our friend. Now, there's China, our friend. China has been making plans with cyber attacks from the Blue Army for years, invading into our infrastructure, our, our, even everything from our power networks to being able to shut down power supply. I have had industrial espionage to the tune of $200 million billion per month from just China. That's how bad it is. And Russia. 
And I'm, by the way, Russia is doing a couple things right. One of them is to stand firm against the takeover of Syria. Uh, we now are into the economic phase of World War III. That started September 11, 2001. This is the 11th year of the economic phase of World War III. World War III is not a future thing. It's already happening. World War III financial phase will be hiccuped toward a disaster that will bring us so close to a nuclear annihilation that we'll accept a new super religion which the Vatican will be pushing and wants to take over Jerusalem. We will see a move to have a biometric world currency tied to the so-called Obamacare and all the other nations will follow suit after America swallows the Obamacare idea that your national ID and your money must be biometric because the Fed Reserve, the only machine able to print enough money to support the G20 and the Europe, will be the Fed Reserve. And all these 15 banks, most of them are American. So we're moving very quickly toward a false peace treaty. And the only one who can ratify the rebuilding of the Herodian Temple is the U.S. President, as selected in 2007, probably researched by Tex Mars, as the scroll of Bush given to George Bush by the Sanhedrin of Israel. So I see Obama as a very top candidate for what I call the abomination that shall desolate. And even his name makes phonetic sense, doesn't it? Mm. The oh. abomination that shall desolate. And the man is a Sunni Muslim. And we can remember, Islam is a satanic religion. In its very yeah, roots, it it's a man who is having seizures and asked his wife whether or not the seizures were valid or not. And the seizures were clearly under the demonic control. And if you see the early writings that are all superseded by the later writings, the entire religion is birthed in, in evil and in duplicity. Yep. tries to say it's a religion of love on one hand, but if you don't love the way they want you to, they kill you because the whole idea of Islam means struggle, which is the same as Mein Kampf. The word struggle, Mein Kampf, means my struggle in German. Their struggle, which is Islam, is to force the whole world to submit to Allah, the moon god of, of, of Mecca and Medina, the war god. That's what they want. They want to submit us to their war. And I see Obama as a weapon of war against America. Yeah, and one and one of the names for Allah in the Quran is the greatest deceiver of all. Right. And he is a great deceiver. Yeah, Obama is a great deceiver. I see him as a liar and even when you do reverse speech on this man, I want to get some reverse speech experts on. Because what happens when you speak verbally, your spirit speaks directly. It's almost like through a looking glass. It's the 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 other side of the mirror, if you want to call it the spirit realm, is a mirror image on the other side of the of this dimensional void. And you can't say lies. Your spirit can't lie. That's why when you look at reverse speech you actually see what people actually are saying. Uh interesting, isn't it? Oh yeah. No 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 this this guy this guy takes the Kia. Now the Kia in the Quran is used to deceive the enemy. Under right. under under Islamic law, you're able to lie as long as the purpose of the lie is to deceive the enemy. Right, and including by the way the it in all of his policies. That's why he called this the Affordable Health Care Act. Now, and by the way, Hillary Clinton's uh, affordable. It's yeah, a total right. lie. But people are stupid. They're not going to read it. They're not going to look at it. They're going to believe what he says. And when you do that. We're, we're going to go for a great fall. And by the way, we have a direct link between Hillary Clinton and her, his, her girlfriend, her confidant, uh, who is actually the daughter of one of the senior people in uh, Saudi Arabia, and is, of course, using Takia to manipulate Hillary Clinton to support the Muslim Brotherhood because they're direct, she's a direct uh, niece of the head of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt. Hmm. So what do yeah, we expect? I mean, uh, you know, what we're seeing here is the Muslim Brotherhood was founded not in the Middle East, but in 1928 in London, England, right. as a way for the Muslims to take over uh, through the, as a proxy for the Rothschild banks and, and other, quote, Satanists of other ilk, because they don't care what holy book you worship on. It could be the Bhagavad Gita, the Quran, anything else. It doesn't matter which, which book you're worshiping on. Well, yeah, and that's why we, we've seen... The, the Muslims have outpopulated every other segment in the world. I mean, they, they produce 8.4 children per couple, where here in the United States the average couple is 1.6 kids. And then they've moved. Uh, the Saudi government was paying uh, Muslim couples $100,000 to emigrate to the United States. Now we have a large population in certain places like Michigan. like 100,000, wow. In that area. They were paying 100,000. The Saudi government. They're taking over England, France, Germany, um, because that's part of their 
belief is when the last caliph comes into being that he's going to unite everyone under Islam. And at that time, the Muslims will rise up, kill the infidels, and take over the world for Islam. Right. And by the way, at the current rate, they're going to take over the world. And the reason why God gave me two books, Clay and Iron and Abortion to Armageddon, is because we so-called Christians kill our babies. We in America push abortion, not only in American citizens, over 55 million babies have died, but also around the world, many more millions. We are killing ourselves because we're killing our posterity, yet the Muslims, as satanic as they are, will not kill their own posterity. And as a result, by the baby carriage, they're taking over the world. They are, exactly. exactly. Isn't that obscene? Isn't that obscene that a satanic based religion is taking over the world by dealing with the issue of pro life? Yeah. If you do abortion, by the way, in a Muslim country, you're beheaded before Friday morning prayers. <clears throat> Your hands are cut off first while you're still alive, and then they behead you. Wow. Yeah. And they don't wait. They don't have a long trial and all this no. garbage. If they find evidence, you're just carted away, treated with great uh, disrespect, and then your hands are cut off and you're beheaded very quickly and given a very ignoble death. And what they do also is they burn your bones, because in Islam, if they burn your bones, then you can't be, uh, you can't be resurrected. Well, it, it, is, it is the religion from hell. I mean, in Saudi Arabia, it's the only religion that's allowed. If you're a Christian, they'll kill you if you practice Christianity. Yeah, Maybe. well, that's why we have um, Muslims uh, that are converted to Christianity in Iran that uh, are basically given a death sentence, not because they even evangelized, but because it's publicly known that they're, quote, a, we're, we're Muslim and they convert to Christianity. It's considered a capital crime in all these Muslim countries, including Iran. And when you do it, they can literally call for your execution just because you are now a Christian and used to be a Muslim. Yeah, they actually put out a contract on you. Well, I'm a Joshua Christian, and I don't believe in uh, being a doormat for Islam or anybody, including the New World Order. And we're going to use everything in our power, including, most importantly, prayer to the Most High God, to know what tactics we need to use as special forces Christians. And we just stop being doormats and, and buying, not a drop of oil should be bought from Saudi Arabia. Not a, one Muslim should be allowed into this country. And we I should, agree with 100%. Yeah, absolutely. We should contain this plague that's spreading. Thank you, Michael Lardy. We'll be back tomorrow with Ted Shubat in Hour One and a lot more on this issue.